Afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here at Whiskey Live in London. Very, very exciting. As always, joined not only by our brand ambassador, but my good friend Ian, aka Posh Scotch. Afternoon. afternoon. How are you doing? Sir. Yeah, I'm good. Good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to here today. What is it that you're most excited about here? Oh, we've already been cracking into the Milroy stand. The Milroy stand the... shows up nicely every time, right? Yeah, oh, they've got some of their stuff, like that Ben Nevis that they sold out of a little while ago. Yep. So good to try that. It's just nice for me to see other independent bottlers, a bit of diversity. It's not stuck to one distillery. However, we've got some fantastic distilleries here today. I've noted a lot of Irish brands, some international brands. What are the brands that are standing out to you, though? Yeah, well, I mean, so look, there's got Glen Grant, they've got their new 21 here. I'm going to be definitely trying that. Very for excited sure. to try 21 year old Glen Grant, yes. Um, and I know the guys at Glen Cadam and Tomsall pretty well as well. Cool. I know they've got some new releases as well. They've got a new Piet. Yep. They've got a white port Tomsall as well. Wow. I okay. Need to try that. So, this is the thing Tomsall, Glen Cadam, I actually did tastings with them over lockdown, yep. and it seems as though they're really driving the brands forward. So if that's somewhere that you think we should start, I reckon let's head over there, check them out, see what they've got to offer, and share it with you guys at home. Should we go? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. At the uh, Tom and Tool and Glen Cadam stand, I'm here with Ben, okay. and uh, we've got a couple of the new releases to try. What are we going to go for first? Man? Perfect. So, firstly, we're going to do the 14-year-old Tom Tau with white port finish. Awesome. So, if I pour this for you. So, when was this one released? Pretty recently, right? Yeah, very recently. Uh, probably in the last couple of months. So, it's 46% natural colouring, which is obviously unusual for Tom and Tau. Normally at 40%. Uh, still should be lovely and smooth. We call it a gentle tram. You know Tom and Sal where it should be nice, yeah, and, nice and smooth drinking. So Yeah, I was a big fan of the Glen Cadden, I think 15 year old that yeah. was in Whiteport that came out maybe 12, 18 months ago now. Yeah, yeah. so as, as you know, we've, we've been experimenting a little bit more with our cast types, um, trying, to, trying to do different stuff. As you can see on the stand, we've got Cognac and Pinot Noir as well. Um, it's worked well with our spirit. Our core range is just uh, bourbon cast mature, so it's nice for limited editions to be something different. Yeah. Is this another one of Ian's experiments? This is it? this is one of Ian's babies. I, I have to admit, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, That's really nice. There's quite a lot of um, tart fruit on it as well. It kind of takes the, the softness of the Tom and Tall, but I think again, being 46% amps it up a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I think. Funnily enough. At 46%, I don't think it actually drinks like 46% whiskey. I think, as I said, we, we're still a gentle jam. It should be nice and smooth. But as you say, it gives it a little bit more complexity for this one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, really, really good. So this, so this actually spent two years in white broadcast. Yeah, I guess that's one thing that's really important to say. You guys, when it comes to finishing, it's more, always more like a secondary maturation, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's something that we really uh, try to do. It's a minimum of 18 months normally, but predominantly it would be two years, two and a half sometimes. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank, thank you, you so much, Ben. Cheers, thank you very Pleasure much. to see you as always. Thank you. Good to see you. Cheers, guys. Hey guys, we're here at Whiskey Live with Paul John and Himanshu, who is the global brand ambassador for this fantastic Indian whiskey distillery. Now, Himanshu, I know today you've got sort of your core range here, which is very exciting. Right. But you've also got this very exciting limited edition release you were telling me a little bit about. Yes, yes. Please, tell us all at home, what is it that you're doing here? What are you trying to achieve with this range? So this is Mithuna, and Mithuna is uh, part of the Zodiac star sign that we have okay. of the series, and this means the Gemini. Okay. So it's as, a, as true to its character, which has got two faceted. So we have this uh, finished in two different casts. So first was the virgin oak, okay. and then it was finished in ex-bourbon. Okay. And that's what makes it special. Uh, this is the color. We are a non-age statement whiskey. It's natural color? It's natural color. It's a beautiful color. It really yeah, is. It yeah, stands out wonderfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So predominantly, you say virgin oak, and then? 
finished in ex bourbon first fill. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And is there an age statement to this? No. So this is matured in Goa, which is about uh, maturing in tropical years. It's very hot. It's very hot. For sure. So it's like one year of aging in Goa is about four years of aging in, say, cool climates like Sweden, Japan, Scotland. Absolutely. And uh, this would be rested for about seven years. So we are talking about nearly 28 to 30 years. Equivalent. Equivalent. That's very interesting. Because one, it's one tropical year. Yes, no, look, I appreciate that. And, and it's interesting when we talk about maturation, people at home probably know Scotland and Ireland, you're looking at about 2% evaporation per annum from your cask. Yeah. When you're in Goa, what sort of evaporation about are you looking at? About eight to 10%. At? I mean, it's a big chunk. Big, if you're thinking yeah. per annum, one tenth of your cask evaporates. Evaporate. It's just gone to the angels yes, and that's yes, it. Yes. All of a sudden, seven years in cask is a yes, long time, it's a right? a long time. For yes. sure. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Now, tell me, Himanchu, I'm a Pisces. I can still drink this, yeah? Uh, yes. It's okay? Yes. All right, fantastic. And is this a range that you're looking to continue on? Yeah, so it's a limited release. Okay. So we don't have it often. Okay. But when we release it, we release it in the small lots and quantities as we can. Okay. As what the nature and Goa gives us. For sure. So yeah. small allocations to look out for. Yes. Something a little bit different from Paul Jean, but yes. it's cask strength. Yes. It's natural color. Yes. And they're big, bold flavors. Absolutely. Okay. Well, look, guys, to me, that sold me. I love Paul Jean. I think it's a very interesting distillery character. Really does stand apart from the rest. And as Himanshu is saying, it's likely because of the cask they use, but also the climate they are in. And yeah. when you're looking at sort of more limited edition bottlings like this, it makes the brand all the more special. So Himanshu, thank you so much for sharing. Really looking forward to learning so much more. Thank you. See you thank soon, you so much. Thank, thank you for dropping by. No worries. Thank you, Chris at Whiskey Live from Glen Graham, and we're here to talk about the brand new 21 year old that's just been released. Chris, tell me all about it. Ian, I'm so glad you stopped by. Thanks for coming to see us. So, just released last week is our Glen Graham 21 years old. So, we have the rest of our core range here, and it's been quite a journey, I think, for Dennis, our master distiller, to really be happy and with the casks and feels that the 21 is ready to be bottled. So, we've been waiting very, very patiently for it. And uh, we have here a reflection of space side, of nature, but also the gardens um, that kind of culminate into the flavors of the blackbird and that really give Glen Grant the flavor profile that it, uh, that it has in its roots. Cool. We've got almost 100% um, uh, bourbon casks. And okay. It's got that really kind of light note coming through that I really hope you pick up and enjoy. Awesome, thank you very much. I mean, I guess Glen Grant really started popping off a few years ago when the 18 won a bunch of like Whiskey of the Year awards. This is it. I think when you look at Grand Glen, Glen, you look at the kind of history of Speyside in a bottle. Um, it has everything that the region's known for. And some of those flavors are just perfectly preserved and it's necessarily that they're making great whiskey since the 1840s. Um, the 18 was a really kind of a milestone and we're hoping to do it again with the 21. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, hopefully some more, you know, from your guys' perspective, a few more awards are uh, forthcoming and like... Uh, I mean, that would be wonderful. And you know, down the uh, other end of the uh, the poor range here, my personal favorite is still is still our ten year old. You know, a like bang for buck. It's a wonderful sip of whiskey, and uh, it's nice to be able to play in this realm, but also play in that end of the market as well. Yeah, amazing, cool. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Really That's appreciate pleasure, it. Man. Great to see you. Thanks, hey. Hi guys, we're here today at the Tamna Bulan stand here at Whiskey Live with Andy, the brand ambassador, the global brand ambassador nonetheless for Tamna Bulan. Andy, thank you so much for jumping on camera with you're us. Welcome. We just want to hear a little bit about Tamna Bulan, what you're doing at the moment, because it's quite an exciting time for you guys, right? It is, yeah. So actually the range of whiskies that you see at the stand today, we launched in 2016 right. to celebrate 50 years of the Tamna Bulan distillery. Um, so it was set up in the 1960s purpose built to create a signature Speyside style of whiskey, right. which is very much that kind of fruity, orchard fruits, sweetness, just whiskies which embrace accessibility, versatile, mixable, delicious. Love it, fantastic. And I mean, I notice what you're doing here is very much steering away from what might be sort of the classic view of Scotch, where you've got age statements and that. You're focusing very much on flavor, it seems, finishing, 
getting different flavors out there for different people, making sure you cater to the whole crowd. Is that kind of the intention? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you know, there's a whole library of flavor to be explored within the world of single malt Scotch whiskey. And the more that we can, I guess, embrace that accessibility and bring people into the category, then that's a great place to be. Um, our whiskies, as you mentioned, it's kind of simple to I think of a single malt with double flavor, you know, so each of the whiskies we have are double matured. Yeah. So predominantly we use X bourbon barrels first. And then we, we finish these whiskies in a number of different wine casks. So okay. sherry casks will predominantly bring dried fruit flavors forward. Red wine casks will bring those red berry fruits forward. And we've even got a white wine cask edition, which is really kind of green fruit and this sort of nice floral note. All right, well, I tell you what, Andy, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Can we try one of these drams? Which one do you recommend the most here today? So I'm going to pour you the French Cabernet Sauvignon cask edition. All right, let's do it. Are you a fan of red wine as well? Uh, it's one okay, of my favorites. Great. Is this one your glass? Favorites. It is indeed, yes, yeah, thank cool. you very much. So a lot like the wine style, French Cabernet Sauvignon is quite full bodied. So um, we're looking at like dark berry fruits, but all on top of that kind of classic Speyside style. So toffee, apples, pears, peaches, that lovely kind of fruity style. Just delicious whiskey. The balance is really good. Yeah. And actually at 40%, I didn't realize it had been watered down that much. It's very easy, very approachable, but at the same time, has a good amount of body, a nice bit of oomph behind it. Yeah. You're drinking whiskey, do you know what I mean? Definitely, yeah. Definitely drinking a whiskey. Great highball whiskeys. We've played around with a number of different kind of fruity sodas. So I like love a nice, that. A Not nice... being too precious with the liquid. Enjoy it how you want to enjoy it, right? Exactly, yeah. Cool. But if we can, of course, yeah, enjoy it how you want, you know, drink it neat or mix it. But if we can give like people the perfect way of creating an experience, you know, pair that with a little bit of uh, chocolate with some strawberry or raspberry, then you, you create a really memorable experience. You know? You're speaking my language. Thanks. Lovely. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you. Looking Cheers. forward to getting more time to in the glass. Nice for one, sure. guys. So we are here at the end of Whiskey Live. Today has been the trade day. We wanted to really get stuck in, bring you along for the ride before things get too busy over the weekend. Ian, I've tried some truly great drams. Uh, I'll yeah. flaunt them to you in a moment. What's been your highlight of the week? What, 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 what have I not tried that you have? In had? fairness, probably all of it. There was a couple, of the, a couple of the Milroy's things. I don't know if you've tried all of them. Milroy's blows me away time and time again. It's wonderful to look at independent bottlers that are putting out stuff, not only super rare, at 25-year-old Ben Nevis, 27-year-old Spring Bank, etc., but also hitting the younger age statements. Yeah. A bit of a mix, a bit of a mash. Well, I mean, they obviously bring over Spirit Spirits from uh, Germany as well. Yep. 1992 Spring Bank. Amazing. Really good. I love it. A birth year vintage for me, especially from a distillery like Bit uh, Springbank. Yeah, a naked Springbank as well. Very different to, to our Springbank. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Bourbon matured. Um, what else has been good? Do you know what? Actually, I was really pleasantly surprised by the Fassi Pair 18. Yeah. Scottish and Scottish Oak finish. It's an interesting one. I struggle with Fassi Can sometimes, yeah. but as it goes, it's a great age statement release from the distillery. I think, yeah, look, definitely something to try, particularly for you guys at home. If you like Feta Can, the 18 year old is yeah. an interesting one. For Pricey sure. but tasty. Pricey but tasty, I think that's a good summation. I have to say, one of the brands I was blown away from, and you were saying at the beginning of this, we need to go over Tom and Tal Glen Callum. Tom and Tal in particular, you know, as I said at the beginning, I think, had a few of their tastings over lockdown, yeah. and it was interesting. But being able to try a bit of everything, trying some of their newer, sort of slightly more uh, sort of intricate or cask release, you know. What? Special releases are cool there. They've got I, some cool stuff going on. I love on. what they're doing in special releases. I think for the more experienced drinker, like the fact they're 46% as well. Yeah. You know, and, and different cask finishes, lots of different wines, lots of different cherries. They've got a lot going on. The white port as well, it's unusual. You don't see a lot of white port around, right? I tell you what, there's been a few white wine casks and a few interesting casks from today. I've really stood out. Yeah. But um, I think all in all, what we're basically saying is you need to get down to shows like this. Whiskey Show, Whiskey Live. What was it you were telling me the other day? We've got another show that's just coming back. Whiskey Event. The Whiskey Event back. is coming back this year, right? You need to bring yourselves down here, guys. You can free pour from most of these stands, try releases you wouldn't be able to get otherwise, and really get stuck in to figure out what it is that you love. Yeah. So. Sorry. I mean, look, we've, we've had a bunch of stuff today. I think compared to the whiskey show, obviously a little bit smaller, but I think you know, in terms of the price of entry, we probably got 
got our money's worth ten times over. Just on the mill right stand. For right? sure, for sure, easily. And this is the thing, not only that, but we're meeting interesting people, having conversations with other like-minded individuals, and ultimately getting more stuck in, which is, I think, what you guys need to do. So, if you've enjoyed this, drop us a like, drop us a follow, drop us a comment, let us know what you think, any of the whiskeys you've tried, or anything that you think we've missed out. Love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Sludger. Nice to see you.